Click, click, click. Jack continued pressing the button on the remote, idly watching the different channels pop up before changing again. Nothing really came on during the weekends, surprisingly. Nothing but paid programming and other TV shows he didn't enjoy. Sighing, the college student rose up from his sofa, making his way to the desk resting against the wall next to his bed. He was already done with homework, finishing most of it in class that day. Unlike his roommate, Jack could get his shit done fast enough to have the rest of the day to himself to do whatever. He wasn't feeling up to playing any video games, didn't really want to drive out anywhere. Swiping his black hoodie off of his chair, Jack slipped it on and grabbed his dorm keys, shoving them in his pockets after closing the door behind him. A nice walk around the campus should do the trick. Fresh air usually calmed him, if not helped him think. Lately, he'd been feeling different. He knew it was his body or college itself. He didn't have any girlfriends to worry about. He just felt different without any explanation. It gave him a headache. He was trying so hard. Jack rubbed his temples, pushing the door leading outside with his foot. A gust of wind swept across, slamming the door behind him. It was around 6 p.m. The sky was mixed with both orange and blue. The further the sky grew, the darker it got. Curfew, surprisingly, was 12 o'clock midnight. He never really questioned it vocally, but always wondered why it was so late. Usually curfew was around 8 p.m. where he lived. Hi, Jack! The male looked up to see one of the girls in his class. She most likely had left, considering she still had her book bag on her shoulder. Jack half smiled and rose a hand to greet her. It was... Oh, what was her name? Jenny. Jenny Smith. Hey, Jenny. Just now leaving class? Jenny smiled and nodded her head, adjusting the strap. It's pretty late. What made you stay so long? The girl's smile lost its brightness for a split second before reviving. Oh, just a study session. We have finals coming up soon, so, you know. Best to stay on the ball, she giggled before tucking her hair behind her ear. What are you doing out here anyway? It's gonna storm tonight. Jack shrugged her shoulders before eyeing the sky, smelling the air for moisture. Yep. It would rain any second. This come out for fresh air is all. Got done with homework and class and stuff. Didn't feel like playing any video games or watching TV, so I came out here. Then he nodded her head every so often, showing him that she was paying attention and smiling again. <laughs> well, you got your air. I gotta go, though. I'll see you later. Before Jack could reply with a goodbye, the girl quickly dashed off past him, following the sidewalk up around the side of the dorm. Jack rose a brow in curiosity. His mind zipped with question, only to have it cut off by a drop of rain. Then another... And another. Shit, he mumbled, running back to the door to get back inside, not wanting to get soaked in the rain. Another slam of the door rose up behind him. Jack started shaking his fingers through his hair, sending water droplets everywhere while wiping off the rain from his face and jacket. As he made his way back up to his dorm room, Jack began fishing through his pockets for his keys, whistling a random tune while he traveled up the two flights of stairs, listening to his tune echo out in all directions. It was kind of creepy, now that he thought about it. Where was everyone? It was too quiet for a Friday evening. There was usually people up and about. Maybe a lot of students stayed behind for tutoring. Maybe some went home for the weekend. Maybe people are already in bed. Or in their dorms. Being very, very quiet. Jack sighed as he began unlocking the door, shoving his keys back in his pocket after the door closed behind him. No, Greg, you hear? Nothing. No response. Just the sound of rain hitting against the window. Huh. Guess he's studying too. That's a first. Jack made his way over to his bed, slumped down to get ready for sleep. Pulled off his hoodie, kicked his shoes off, and rolled over to face the wall. Not bothering with the covers, he just wanted some sleep. Closing his eyes, Jack slowly began dozing off. The rain partially lulling him to sleep. Praise Cherenbach, for his blood-stained hands will bring salvation to us all. He shall bring us closer to our everlasting paradise. He is our Lord and Savior. Praise Cherenbach! Praise Cherenbach! Jack let out a gut-wrenching gasp for air, waking in a cold sweat. His eyes darting from one corner to another before rising up from his spot, he panted, feeling his hands trembling from the dream that he just had. 
Jack looked around his room, relieved that his roommate Greg was in his bed. He could tell he was fast asleep from the dreaded snoring that came out of him. He himself was surprised that he could sleep through it. Slowly exhaling through his mouth, Jack rose up from his bed, staggering to the mini fridge on the other side of the room. His mind churned questions. What kind of dream was that? Never had he experienced one so... so real. Grabbing a water bottle from the mini fridge, Jack began gulping down the bottle, not caring if he woke up Greg. Letting out a cold sigh, Jack tossed the now empty bottle into the recycling bin, now making his way back to the bed. He stopped in front of the mirror, hands gripping the sides of the sink as he eyed himself. He was pale, eyes borderlining bloodshot, groaning he let his head hang low, fighting the urge to vomit. Man, what the fuck, he murmured, running his hand across his forehead to wipe away even more sweat. That's what I get for playing those horror games, he thought to himself, slightly smiling as he began brushing off the whole thing. Get it together, Jack, it was only a dream. Dreams don't come true, just played too much Silent Hill is all. No big deal. Go back to sleep. Get some decent rest. Easier said than done. That morning, Jack felt something shake him awake. Dude, Jack, get up, bro. You got to see this. Jack let out a tired, irritated groan from under the covers, slowly pulling them down to see Greg. The blonde grinned and flashed a photo on his phone in his face. Guess who got laid last night? It was a picture of some topless girl in his lap, posing for the camera. She looks drunk, Jack muttered sleepily, his hand slowly rubbing the sleepies from his eyes. Greg blew air through his pursed lips, rolling his eyes as he closed his phone. Pfft, you're just jealous. Bullshit. I'd rather have a life than get some chick pregnant in college. Touche, good sir, but fuck you. I use protection. Whatever. Jack began pulling his covers back over his head, feeling the weight of his friend rise up off of his bed. Good, he could get back to sleep. Dude, I had such a weird dream last night. Jack paused when his mind processed the word weird dream and was instantly awake. Really? Me too. What was it about? Greg shrugged his shoulders, his fingers flying across the numbers on his cell form forming a check to his girlfriend. I had a dream where my grandma blew up like a balloon and started chasing me around with a giant fly swatter. Jack's fear and anxiety dropped. He turned his head to look at him. What the hell, dude? Greg laughed after snapping his cell shut. I know, right? Fucking hate that hag. Wouldn't surprise me if she completely dislikes me. I broke so much shit in her house as a kid. Jack rolled his eyes, fully pulling the covers over his head, wanting to get more sleep in. Greg looked over and rose a brow. You said you had a dream, right? You remember it? Jack laid there in silence, wanting him to just leave already. The blonde furrowed his brow and began nudging Jack's back with his foot. Come on, tell me. I know you're awake. I had a dream about some guy preaching. You say my dream is weird. I never said your dream was weird. But it is. Anyway, go on. Greg pulled up his knees, resting his arms on them as he listened. Jack sighed and rose up from his warm salvation of sleep. There was this guy preaching about some guy named uh, Cherubog. And he'd lead everyone to paradise with bloodstained hands, and they dressed in these weird-looking robes and wore these weird masks. Jack looked over to his friend, watching him give a weirded-out look. Bro, you played way too much Silent Hill. Jack smiled a little and shrugged his shoulders, relieved that his friend had said his thoughts the night before. What can I say? I love horror games. Jack spent most of his morning studying for finals, wanting to get school-related things out of the way before he could enjoy the weekend. Greg left to meet up with his girlfriend, telling Jack he'd be back around six. It was usually on Sundays when the two sat down together and played one of the many video games they had until it was time for bed. For Jack, that is. Sighing, he turned the last page over on his note packet, memorizing his handwriting slowly. Suddenly a knock at the door tore him from his studying. Jack turned his head and eyed the door then rose up from his desk to answer it. Pulling it open, he was surprised to see Jenny standing in front of the door. Oh. Um, hey, Jenny. Jenny smiled and waved back. Hi, Jack. What are you doing inside on a Saturday? Jack looked back at his desk before turning back to the girl. I'm, um, getting, uh, my studying done early so I can enjoy the rest of the day with, uh, relaxation. 
Jenny nodded her head understandingly and placed her hand on her hips. Well, I'm sure you've done enough studying. You should come outside. Everyone's doing something today. Jack mentally sighed in relief. Good. So people were here today. I'll come out when I'm done, I guess. Jenny giggled and nodded again. <laughs> okay, see you later. And just like that, the student was off in a flash. Jack smiled a little before closing the door, making his way back to his desk. He sat down and began rereading the page of notes, keeping everything fresh in his mind. And then it hit him. How did Jenny know where his dorm room was? They never really talked to each other, let alone shared dorm room numbers. Kind of gave him a creepy feeling at first, but then his realist side thought otherwise. Maybe she saw you come into this room once without you noticing. Maybe Greg had told her what room he lived in, and just so happened that Greg and he shared rooms. Shaking his head in frustration, Jack rubbed his temples. You're just overanalyzing everything, Jack. No need to fret over pointless stuff, he said to himself, running his fingers through his hair. Maybe he was done studying for the day. Again, he swiped up his hoodie off of his chair, slipped it back on, along with his shoes before heading outside. When he got to the bottom of the stairs, he felt himself breathing another heavy sigh of relief when he saw how many students were up and about. Glad to know he wasn't going crazy. He watched as some people played ball, tossing each other a football or basketball. Girls were huddled in groups outside, talking about Lord knows what. Not that he cared. He was just happy to see people. And just then, a hand crept over his shoulder. Jack looked back to see who it was, and it was none other than Jenny. Again. Oh, oh. hey Jenny. The girl smiled. You're outside of that dark room. Took my advice to come out, eh? Jack smiled nervously, giving a nod or two. You should hang out with me and my friends. We're going to go for a walk in the woods. Jack rose a questioning brow. For what? Jenny laughed. We're just hanging out at our place. Come on, don't be a wuss. Jack felt a little hesitant at first, but he slowly came around and agreed to follow. Jenny grabbed him by the hand, then began tugging him along, making sure he was close. Yeah, off to the cave. The cave? Jack asked, watching the forest grow darker with each step. Our hangout, silly. Sarah found it at the beginning of the year, so we decided to make it our hangout area. Us. Jack asked again, looking back over his shoulder, watching the school slowly get consumed by trees. Me, Sarah, Bobby, Fred, and Luna. You ask a lot of questions. Jack couldn't help but let out a nervous laugh. Sorry, I don't mean to. I've been having a rough weekend is all. Jenny looked back at him and smiled. It's okay. We all have our days. As minutes passed, the two walked around what seemed like an invisible path that only Jenny could see. Jack couldn't help but begin to worry. He was about to open his mouth to ask another question until a girl released his hand, punching her fist in the air. We're here, she sang, running ahead of the boy. Jack looked up to see a rather large cave next to a babbling brook. He watched as two girls and boys appeared from inside, greeting Jenny happily. Until they saw Jack. Their smiles faded and they began leaning into Jenny, whispering while keeping their eyes on him. Jack felt a little nervous, feeling as if he shouldn't be there at all that he should go back to his dorm room playing Silent Hill. But Jenny looked back as well, gesturing him to come forward like it was okay. The brunette took a deep breath before making his way over, eyeing over everyone but Jenny. All of them sitting. All of them didn't look pleased, despite their forced smiles. Uh, hey. Jack throws a hand, giving a wave. Sarah eyed him over before crossing her arms. Hi, she said bluntly. Hey, said Bobby and Luna. What's up? Fred smiled, shoving his hands in his pockets. Well, what's he doing here, Jen? I thought it was going to be just you. Jenny rolled her eyes at Sarah's statement and wrapped an arm around Jack, her free hand patting him on the chest. I thought it would be cool if you guys met Jack. He's a really cool guy. Honest. Luna and Bobby looked at each other for a while. Fred nodded. I've heard about him. Straight A student, smart kid. Fred walked over to Jack and began leading him inside the cave, rambling on about what kind of video games he liked, leaving the group outside. Sarah shot daggers towards Jenny. Jenny gave a stink eye back. What the hell do you think you're doing, Jen? You can't let outsiders into- He's not going to find anything out. Be nice for a change, Sarah. Sarah glared and grumbled under her breath, following after Fred. Luna and Bobby looked at one another before going in as well. The group settled inside. Everyone huddled around a fire in a circle. Jack sat in between Jenny and Fred, while the others completed their small circle. 
Jack felt uncomfortable, especially with Sarah giving dirty looks every so often. But surprisingly, the evening wasn't all too bad. Everyone got to know a little bit more about him, asking questions and talking about what they enjoyed doing. Talking about school and exams. Jack looked around the cave as they spoke. It was cool inside. They had tables and desks, places where they set up books. They even had a compartment for food. It really was like a place to hang out. And I guess I worried about nothing, Jack thought, smiling at the comment Fred made. There was a sudden clap of thunder from above, causing the group to look up at the entrance of the cave. Another storm? Sarah complained, raising up a book bag over her shoulders. I'm leaving. Last thing I want to do is get caught up in the storm. Bye. Sarah turned on her heels and ran over to her bike, resting up against a tree, and rode off back to school. Luna and Bobby rose up together. We don't want to get wet either. We'll catch you guys later, okay? Luna said, smiling over at Jack and the others. The duo both pulled their book bags up off the ground, running off to try and beat the storm. Fred didn't move. I'm going to stay here for a bit. There's some things I need to get back here. You guys can go on ahead if you want to. Jack looked at Jenny before getting up off the stool. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go back too. Greg's probably back and might be wondering where I am. Jenny smiled up at him and nodded. Okay, I'm going to help Fred. Just follow the same path back to school. I'll see you later. Jack smiled and waved goodbye to the two, making his way out of the cave and into the forest. It shouldn't be too hard to get back if he followed Luna and Bobby from afar. An hour passed. Jack began unlocking his dorm room with his keys, opening up the door to find Greg on his laptop on the sofa. Greg looked up and smiled. Yo, Jack, where you been? He asked, surprised that Jack had stepped out altogether. I was invited to come back uh, at some secret base in the forest behind the school, he replied, closing the door behind him while he began kicking off his shoes. Greg raised a brow, closing his laptop. Oh, really? Who invited who? You know that girl Jenny in our civilizations class? Greg's smile slowly faded. Dude, she's weird. Jack furrowed his brow in confusion. What do you mean she's weird? Weird how? Greg looked away nervously before answering. Okay, you know what kind of shit she reads? Like, she's like... Books upon books about these freaky-ass cults. I, I shit you not. Jack rolled his eyes before walking over to his dresser. Dude, I'm serious. Like, you probably shouldn't hang out with her. Like, people who read that stuff are messed up in the head. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Jack replied, rummaging around through his clothes. I'm gonna take a shower. We have another storm coming. Greg blinked and looked back out the window. Oh man, really? I was gonna go out with Gabby tonight. He moaned sadly, watching the clouds churn in a deep gray. Jack chuckled at his friend before going into the shower. Jack, Jack, wake up! Jack felt Greg shaking him, groaning in anger. Ugh, what? What is it? He asked. Looking up at the nervous Greg, Greg looked over to the window. Dude, someone's out in the forest lighting fires. Jack rubbed his eye with his palm. What? Someone is outside lighting fires. Look! Greg pulled him out of bed and pointed out towards the forest. Jack sighed before rubbing his eyes and looking out the window. To his surprise, there was a lit fire that was far back in the woods, almost around the area where Jenny's secret base was. Hmm. Well, I'll be damned. There is a fire, he muttered, noticing the storm had stopped. What time is it? 2 a.m. We should go check it out. I mean, that looks like where their little hideout is. Greg gave Jack a freaked out look of, you're out of your fucking mind. What? What? I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation why someone's out there lighting fires. Yeah, for cults. Jack shot him a look. Dude, get over yourself. There is no cult. I call bullshit. I'm not going. Jack smirked. You chicken? He asked watching Greg get flustered. Dude, seriously, don't go. Last thing you want is to get in trouble. Jack rolled his eyes. Whatever. I'm gonna go check it out. If there's anything wrong, I'll report it to the dean. Jack changed out of his pajamas, dressed in jeans, a blue t-shirt, along with his black hoodie and shoes. Pulling out their emergency flashlight from the desk drawer, Jack walked over to the door. See you in a bit, he called out, watching Greg shake his head. Curiosity killed the cat, man. Killed the cat, he called back watching the door close. Jack pulled his hood over his head and began making his way down the stairs. It was probably just Jenny and her friends hanging out at their spot late at night. I mean, loads of people do that, right? The second he walked outside, Jack felt the air shift from normal to damp and chilly. He began making his way towards the forest, using the flashlight as much as he could to follow the path Jenny had led for him. 
down the previous day. Jack started growing nervous, listening to the sounds of life, of night in the forest. Easy now, Jack. Absolutely nothing that can hurt you in these forests. Nothing. Minutes passed as Jack finally began getting closer to the cave Jenny showed him before. He could see the dim light from afar and talking, loud talking, but it didn't sound like Jenny or Bobby or anyone else from their group. The closer he got, the clearer the voices. Turning off his flashlight, Jack peered around the tree. What he saw shook him to his core. There, standing outside the cave, was a group of robed people. Judging by their height, they were students, both male and female. They all wore black robes and blue mouthless masks with big eye holes. One of them began stepping up onto a podium. He rose his hands up into the air. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining me this night of nights. Tonight, we summon our Lord and Savior, Chernobog. The group below him cried and called with things like praise and all hail. Tonight, we choose the sacrifice, the one who will lead us to paradise, free us from this hell. The group of students began cheering, chanting the name of Chernobog. Jack shook his head in disbelief slowly backed up from the tree that he hid behind. Oh my god, it really is a cult, he murmured. Jack turned to run back to the school, only to be stopped by Jenny, who was standing there the whole time. J Jenny, thank god you're here. Jack ran over to her. There, there's this cult thing. We, we gotta tell somebody. Jenny smiled. Cult? He's no cult, Jack. You're just overreacting, she chuckled, suddenly feeling Jack shake her by the arms. No, listen to me. We need to get out of... Jack's words were cut short by a rock against his head. His eyes fluttered slightly, stumbling back before collapsing on the ground with a thud. Blurry figures began circling around him as he watched Jenny smile down at him. And then, everything went black. Jack awoke from a bucket of cold water being dumped over his head, blood trickling down the side of his head onto his ear and side of his face. He winced, feeling his head throb in pain. The second he remembered the last thing he saw, he gasped, looking up to see what he was sitting in front of. His arms were held firmly behind his back. The leader of the cult walked up in front of him and smiled under the mask. Chernobog has found his sacrifice. Hail! He called, listening as the group repeated the phrase. Jack attempted to struggle, the pain of his head fighting against him. You shall become one of Chernobog's sons the chosen one to live upon the wretched world and do his bidding. The group cried the phrase once more. Jack shook his head as fast as he could. No, 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 all of you are crazy, let me go. He yelled, letting out a yelp of pain from his arms being twisted. The leader laughed, turning to the group behind him. Come, my brothers and sisters, help me change this non-believer into the son of Chernobog. The group chanted the phrase, stepping closer to form a large circle around him. Praise, for his blood-stained hands will bring salvation to us all. He shall bring us closer to our everlasting paradise. He is our Lord and Savior. Praise, praise Chernobog. He cried once more. Jack listened as the group began chanting in a different language. He felt his heartbeat grow faster, watching one of the group members walk before them with a tray of tools and other queer objects. The person pulled their mask off, revealing it to be Jenny. She smiled, taking a spoon from the tray. Isn't it great, Jack? The great Lord Chernobog has chosen you to be his son. Jack shook his head, tears flowing from his eyes. I never knew you'd be the one. No, oh, Jenny, please, no, please, please don't do this, he begged, watching her step in front of him. She giggled, placing her hand on his forehead. All hail, Chernobog. The group then stabbed the spoon into his left eye, ignoring the cries of pain Jack let out. He squirmed and struggled against the two who held him down, feeling his eye being gorged out of its socket. Hold still, Jack. You'll make me kill you, Jenny said with complete calmness as she began working his other eye out, watching blood spurt and trickle down his face, still ignoring his cries and pleas. The leader stepped in, holding a bowl of black hot ooze in his hands. Behold the sight of Chernobog, he cried watching Jenny hold his head still and began pouring the tar-like liquid into his eye sockets. Jack let out a blood-curdling stream of pain, feeling the substance flow over and trickle down his eyelids. Placing his hand on Jack's forehead, the leader began chanting the same language as the others, watching as Jack's body became limp and lifeless. He watched as Jenny held a book open to a passage of a different language. Rise, Lord Chernobog. 
Rise and take the vessel of the sacrifice we give you. Give yourself to this vessel. Be one with this vessel. Rise, great lord, rise. 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 Panting heavily, Jack rose up from the now dead body of Bobby, yanking off the mask he wore like the others. Standing up, he looked over the massacre he created. Every single person was dead. Masks torn off, throats slashed, guts cut open, eyes gorged out. His hood and pants stained with blood. Scalpel in hand, Jack turned to the last living person. Jenny, borderlining death, watched as he stepped above her. His skin turned black, his teeth sharpened to a point, nails long and sharp. He wasn't human anymore. She smiled, blood leaking from her mouth as she spoke. Release me into everlasting paradise. Jack growled low, teeth showing. You don't deserve paradise. None of you do. He knelt down, swiping the mask from the ground. Burn in hell. All of you. Jenny watched as he pulled the mask on, the black substance trickling down onto the mask from his eyes. She grabbed a hold of his ankle weakly, begging to be released to paradise, only to have him pull away from her before walking off into the shadows. She cried, tears rolling down her face as she called out to him until her last breath.